Okay, we haven't done this in a while, but it's time to go coastal. The thing I miss the most about jumping in a car and just pressing down on the gas is the feeling that anything can happen from your point of departure to your destination. Travel over the last few years felt so prescriptive. Everything we did needed a test, a plan, and approvals. It took the energy and spontaneity out of it. That's why we leave, right? To be confronted with places and emotions that break from our routine. To be exposed to what may come. The Philippines isn't known for its cities. They are unfortunately busy and quite polluted. The beauty of the country can be found a few hours from them. Most people fly into our beach destinations, but I've always said that driving our coastlines will give you the most authentic and fulfilling experiences. This is Going Coastal. Lucena is the capital city of Quezon. Quezon in itself could be a whole other episode of this show, but its shape is very long and awkward, so we won't be able to cover much of it in this trip. So we left the office at five in the morning. This is possibly gonna be one of the longest going coastal trips that we've done so far. Usually we do four hour drives per day. This time we're gonna be doing eight hours straight today um, and a little bit more later and then we're gonna have to come back all the way. So we're heading to Camarines Norte, so the Bicol region, um, and then we're gonna go all the way down to Naga to shoot a couple more videos there. It's way too early, I still need my coffee, but our first stop is gonna be Lucena City. This city has a rich history and is not quite urbanized, but we were just passing through. That was the first very uneventful three hour leg of this trip. Uh, we're currently in Lucena City. It is quite traffic. I don't know why, but we're probably not lucky today, but it's just bumper to bumper. Uh, we're getting really hungry. Uh, we know that Lucena is known for their chami pancit. Uh, so hopefully there are a few places open um, before we continue on our journey. Uh, make like this. Mm -hmm. feel good. Yeah. That took longer than expected. We're heading to Cafe Antigua, who apparently makes a really good chami. Unlike other pancit dishes you might be familiar with, chami has a sweet and spicy kick to it. The noodles are thick and chewy and cooked in a deep broth. For those of you who know lomi quite well, you could say that this is kind of like a dry version of that dish. You can find anything from cabbage to quail eggs to liver and chicharron in different versions. So there was two choices. Original, anghang tamis, which is what I got, which is sweet and spicy. And you can also do soy. Like if breakfast could be this every morning, why not? And from what we've read online, this place is fairly legit. It's been here for quite a while. It's kind of considered an institution. You can see a lot of regulars coming in and out at 9 in the morning, so it is really considered kind of like a breakfast place. And everyone's eating some sort of stew or the spencet dish and some shop out, which we got as well. Let's try this. Mmm. You can definitely taste that yum yum powder. That's good. Sweet, spicy. The noodles have a nice bounce to them. Very slippery, so there's some sort of thickener happening here. That broth really goes through the noodles properly. The quail eggs a nice touch. I can picture myself completely drunk with a fried egg, really enjoying this. Okay, next, shop out. Big bola bola. I mean, this is very clear, you see, our Chinese heritage where shao bao and noodles are considered breakfast foods. That sweet sauce. Mm. I don't eat shao bao much, so I'm trying to watch my weight. But this is good. Really perfect texture here in, in terms of the dough. So good. Right now, after I finish all of this, we're gonna head out for more food explorations. We are in Quezon, and Quezon's really known for the production and industry of coconuts. Uh, but there's one particular type of coconut that I've never been able to experience firsthand, so I'm really excited for our next stop. Got a long day ahead. Learned everything about love in the early days. 
Makapuno is an abnormal coconut. There's really no other way to put it. As it matures, the water inside gets thicker and sweeter and the meat takes over most of the coconut. The result is a really heavy and meaty coconut that is used in various desserts in the Philippines from ice creams to pies and halo halo. It's a prized ingredient, yet is rarely bought and used fresh. Most people actually already buy it sweetened and preserved. We met Policarpio Abari, who was generous enough to show us his farm and share some insights about this rare product. So how does one start a Macapuno farm? Actually, this is a passion. My father was a coconut farmer ever since. Traditionally, we are having this Macapuno as we call a uh, kabuig or in one tree out of 100 nuts we are only able to get uh, 5 to 10 percent so from then on when i learned that there is the technology about embryo cultured makapuno then it came to my mind to invest on it mm -hmm. that's why it is called uh, embryo cultured makapuno they are rescuing the embryo because makapuno will not germinate by itself yeah so what they usually do is they take the makapuno nuts and then they take the embryo inside and then grow it in a test tube okay. for at least two years and then transplant it to soil. Then that's where you get the plant. And then so you, then you get a coconut. Yeah. 100% makapuno. Yeah. Oh, wow. After four years, you will be starting to harvest. to have to harvest. Okay. And you can harvest every couple of Every months? 35 to 40 days. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so once, I mean, it's a very heavy investment in the beginning, yeah. but then, then once you're invested, it's continuous. It's no season. No season. And I was mentioning that this is probably some of the sweetest buko juice I've had in the Philippines. Um, and you're telling me that this is a makapuno buko that's about, yeah. that will become, that will become the makapuno. makapuno once yeah. it's matured enough, right? brought my special spoon in here. <laughs> What's crazy and what I didn't realize is how naturally syrupy it already is. And the meat is very thick. Oh wow. It's almost more like um, like a potato in terms of the texture. It's very thick. And that's all meat. That's crazy. Mmm. Okay. So I've never tasted fresh makapuno before. And so you don't know how sweet it's going to be or not. But this is already has a, a, a very light natural sweetness, which is quite nice. But I think texturally, it really does taste like a, a steamed potato in terms of how it feels, and it does have that very distinct makapuno flavor, which is really nice. I think if you eat one, you're so busog after right away. <laughs> that just goes to show that in the Philippines, there's still so much to do, something as special and as unique as makapuno. The farmers themselves are having a hard time finding buyers um, to get their products and push them in the market, yet, you look in the market and it's flooded with makapuno products all over, but how real are those products? Are they overly processed? Are they actually done the way that we saw it being done there, which is just really freshly harvested, which is how it should be. In any case, that's a whole agricultural video. Uh, we're on our way finally towards Bicol. I think we have another three hours and a half to go. Um, today is all about driving and getting the bulk of that driving done so that we can chill and then have fun in Camarillo Norte and then eventually Camarillo Sur. Let's go. We were giants. We were free. This next part is pretty long. To go from Quezon to Camarines Norte, there really is only one way, and we didn't find much to do in between these two provinces. Your first step into Bicol will be through Santa Elena Camarines Norte, where we stopped quickly to try to find some food for the night. There's no food where we're sleeping tonight, so we're just buying essentials. And by essentials, we mean Heineken. Heineken, yeah, beer. <laughs> so Julius went out to buy some food. Um, this is the last town. Town called San 
Santa Elena, which is quite small, uh, but it's the last one before. Oh, there we go. Before we get to the farm. Found you. Hey. While we were in 7 Eleven buying bad food, he actually bought proper Bicolana food. So we have quinoa nut, but using burrios, which is a fish. Um, he bought bituca, because Julius is a gangster. Kineta and Gabi, which sounds really promising. So we've been on the road now since 5 a.m. this morning, so 12 hours and 30 minutes. Probably actively driving for about seven to eight hours, so it was a long day, but I still feel extremely energetic because we experienced some things that are pretty fun. Um, the weather does not look great. So now we're finally heading towards this little farm state. Um, I just found this online and thought it'd be really cool to figure this out. Um, we have no idea if there's gonna be space. We have no idea where this place actually is, so hopefully it's a pleasant surprise. At this point, I was regretting my decision. We found this place online and there really wasn't much about it to learn. On this rocky road, I started second guessing my decisions. One, we weren't in a four x four, and two, there were no signs or directions. Even Google Maps gave up. We were greeted next to a rice field and were led through a nondescript, really dark area. There's a sign there. We were giants. We were free. Julius special, a heart attack on a plate. Caldereta, what's this humba? Adobo. With bananas. Yes. Which is actually a really great idea. And beef, sorry, pork, igado, which is intestines, liver, all the good stuff. So Chester and I were determined that we were gonna eat in 7-Eleven tonight. <laughs> but Julius, the savior, found some really good food. This is what they call laing of the of um, gabe lang, so usually you use gabe leaves, obviously, but here they actually use the meat of the gabe, so there's actually the starch of it, which is really nice. And that's mixed in with, I think it's either pork or beef skin, and then the pink. You see the pink bago on there? There's like a hues of pink in there. And this is so good. Next, we have kinunot. So this is a dish we've actually had in Masbate before. Uh, we had the stingray version. They usually make it traditionally from shark but more and more I think that's becoming illegal. Um, so here they're using a fish, I think it was called burios, burros. Mmm, that's funky, vinegary, has some spice to it, lots of garlic, some ginger. That's a good bite of food. Next, adobo with banana, which is genius for me. Perfect combination. So good. I really, really hope we get a bit of a sunrise so I can fly the drone and give you guys an idea of where we are because we are in the middle of nowhere. There's a full six feet deep pool in front of us, but a beautifully built traditional house and very tastefully built, like well-designed, well-appointed. It's just shocking and surprising to find something like this in a farmstead in the middle of nowhere in Camarines Norte. I love it. Sleeping in a rice field is so underrated. We woke up greeted by a gold sky and cool, fresh air, surrounded with the hushed noises of nature and running river water. Camping and road tripping have become really popular lately, and I think that this is a great movement. Focusing on small-scale, well-designed, low-impact builds, they are so much better than towering hotels polluting the view. While most of our development focuses on the coast, there is so much potential in land, and this is the perfect example. Ang concept ng mag-angan farm and resort is back to basic. Sa pag-develop po nito, that's actually just my idea. Nung una, pang-pamilya lang dapat siya. Tapos nung tinalaunan, 
dumami ng dumami yung mga gustong pumunta. So, nag-open na siya sa public. Nag-start to nung 2018. Tayo ay matatagpuan sa gitna ng palayan, napapaligiran ng kabundukan. Maraming pwede din gawin dito. Swimming. It's cold. Sarap! Pwede din kayo mag- Trekking sa kabundukan na yan, pag panahon ng anihan, pwede kayo mag-experience, mag-ali ng palay. Pag panahon naman ng taniman, pwede kayo mag-experience, mag-tanim ng palay. Punta lang po kayo dito sa Bagangan Farm and Resort na matatagpuan sa Puruk sa East, Barangay Gisikan, Labo, Camarines, Norte. Day two of our trip, I still can't get over how magical that place was. I mean, farm tourism, I've always been a huge believer in it, and that's exactly how you should do it. So next stop, diet. I can't believe I messed it up. In the next episode, we will be exploring Camarinas Norte and everything it has to offer, from its warm people to amazing Bicolana food, fish markets, and islands. This province has so much to offer, and I can't wait to show it to you.